What's up, everyone? Let's talk about what are the best baseball gloves for pitchers. So obviously every position is different. When you're a young player, you're gonna have one glove that's gonna be more versatile. You're gonna use it for multiple positions. But I know, you know, with the holidays coming up, parents are looking to buy their kids a new glove. Kids are looking for a new glove and they're trying to figure out what is the best baseball glove for them. And if they're a pitcher, what's gonna be the right model. So stick around, we'll talk about pitchers gloves in this video. Okay, so one of the first considerations for a pitcher glove, a pitcher specific glove, and obviously you know, one thing to remember here is that as a young player, you're gonna use your glove more versatilely than as like a college player or a pro player. So you might have one glove that you're gonna play shortstop with, you're gonna pitch with, you know, you're gonna play second base with, whatever. Um, but if you do get a pitcher specific glove, it's gonna a, last a lot longer because it won't have the, the wear and tear of playing shortstop with it every day or the outfield with it every day. And so it can be a better investment because you're only gonna use that for one thing and it's just gonna, not gonna break down as fast. Here's one thing that I wanna debunk, a myth that I wanna debunk about pitcher's gloves. It is not that important to have a closed web. So this is a closed web glove. You can't see through it, right? So you can't see what I'm doing with the ball. That's very tricky and fancy it's really not that big of a deal. If you have a trapeze glove, which has a little bit of exposure here, or you have an eye web where you can see a little bit through the web, like it's pretty porous actually, pretty open, you can't really read someone's fingers from 60 feet away. It's just not realistic. Here's what people actually do see when they're tipping their pitches. They see wrist placement. So if this is a curveball and this is a fastball or this is a curveball, this is a fastball, that's what people see. They see different elbow placements, wrist placements, wrist angles, arm angles. Those are the actual tells that give pitches away, whether you're digging in, the, in your glove, stuff like that. But no one can really see through your eye web. That's pretty much a myth. I'm sure there's an exception once in a while for someone with just like some insane peepers, but in general, the web is not gonna come into play. Now, if you're on TV, someone might be able to see it in the stands or relay a sign, but again, that's like such a big deal. Don't worry so much. So my takeaway here is don't worry that much about the web pattern. Most pitcher's gloves, however, are gonna be shaped and sized for your position, and that is by far the biggest factor. So this is one of my favorite gloves that I've ever had. This is a Rawlings hinge web. So you can see it's kind of hinged right here. This is 12 inches. It's got a nice deep pocket, so the shape of the glove matters. Pitcher's gloves typically have a deeper pocket. They have like a more of a bowl shape. Then infielder's gloves tend to be a little more shallower shape and a little less pocket because they want the ball more in the, in the palm so they can get out of their glove faster. Whereas pitchers just want, I wanna be able to glove something that's hit over, over my head or I stab down at it if it's hit between my legs. So the big consideration with getting a pitcher's glove is the size. So what I would recommend, this is a 12 inch, I would recommend anything between 11 and a half and 12 inches. And I think the best range is 11 and three quarters to 12 inches, because it's gonna give you a little more reach to stab a comebacker, to protect yourself from a line drive. And that's gonna be the biggest factor. If you have an 11 and a quarter inch glove, it's gonna be great for second base, okay for a shortstop, but it's not gonna give you as much protection on a comebacker or give you that little bit of extra range to stab a hard hit ground ball where you're really just reacting. So 12 inches is pretty much the standard. 11 and three quarter or 12 is about right. Now, the type of web doesn't matter that much. It's really just a personal preference. Again, I like this big closed web. I like the dual hinge. I think it looks cool. It's whatever. Trapeze is fine. iWeb's fine. All those different web styles are really just personal preference. So if your parent picking out a glove, it doesn't make a difference. It's whatever they think is cool, whatever they're happy with. Uh, I do think a closed web is better than an open web just because sometimes the ball can sneak through, they get loose too quick. Sometimes it can just get kind of like out of, uh, out of, out of whack, I don't know. But I do think a solid web is better, but it's really just a personal preference. Again, no one's really stealing signs through your glove. They're really stealing signs from your wrist placement. Um, and so really the big considerations for a pitcher's glove are the shape, the size, how it feels and how it looks. It's really not that big a deal, but the biggest takeaway is the size of the pitcher's glove. 11 and three quarters or 12 inches, all right? So if you're doing some buying this winter, that's an important factor. The last thing I wanna cover is how much should you spend on a pitcher's glove? So the big thing here is the more you pay, the more you really do get. So this glove is at least five years old now and it's still in pretty darn good shape. It still holds its shape well and that's what you get for a more expensive glove. You get 
harder, stiffer, thicker leather. And the thicker leather, leather is number one, harder to break in, but it, when you do break it in, it holds its shape a lot better. So if you're gonna go above that $150 range into like the $250 heart of the hide, A2000, you know, one of those models or one of the Marucci models are also excellent for that price point, but really the price tiers are sort of like $150 and below. The 150 to 225 range is pretty good now for amateur players. The 250 and above range is exceptional. That's the heart of the hides, the A2Ks, the, you know, the uh, pro preferreds get up to about $400 now. Those are all excellent gloves, the 250 and above, and they will last a lot longer if your kid will take care of it, if you will take care of it, and if you have the time and the strength to break in a harder glove. If you're 12 years old, it's really hard to break in an expensive baseball glove. It's really not worth it. It's better to get a cheaper glove that you can actually squeeze with your little hand and actually break it in. And the other thing is when you're 12 years old, kids don't throw that hard to you because you're 12. And so it takes a lot of pounding to break a glove in and 12 year olds just don't throw hard enough to pound the glove with playing catch to really break it in very fast. When you're a pro guy, and guys are throwing missiles at you and you have a catcher's mitt, you're a brand new uh, catcher with a brand new glove. Guys are throwing 95 into your glove all the day. Like that glove breaks in in a week, right? So playing catch is the best way to break in a glove. When you're young, your hand is too weak to squeeze it. And you, other kids that play catch with you don't throw very hard to like actually get the natural pounding of baseball against glove to break it in. So that's a problem too. So if you're a parent and your kid's 13 and below, I would say go for the $175 and below range where it's gonna be easier for them to break in and still be pretty high quality. If they're 13 and above and they're ready and they really wanna put the time in and they're gonna take care of a nice glove, then I'd say put them extra money in and they can get a, a heart of the hide or an A2000. That's like the entry level, really nice sort of pro quality leather glove and it will last them a lot longer and uh, hopefully they'll take care of it, all right? So hopefully this video on pitcher's gloves helps Obviously it can be a confusing thing, especially if you're trying to surprise your kid. I don't really recommend doing that. I really recommend letting your son pick out his own glove if it's a, if a Christmas present or birthday present because it's, it's highly about what it looks like, how it feels to them. If they think it's cool, that's the biggest thing. All right, thanks again for watching. I'm Coach Dan Blewett. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe below, hit the like button, check out my other videos, and I'll see you here next time.